Some things do not change after a primary, even a primary result that no one, including the winning candidate, had predicted. The thing that does not change with political wins in Washington is the calendar. There are only 10 legislative days before the July 4th recess. Another thing that has not changed, the Republican Party and the Republican leadership has a difficult choice. They can choose to address the immigration issue head on and get it resolved and give the Republican nominee in the 2016 a fighting chance in his or her run for the White House. Or they can go back to the bunker, sharpen their anti-Obama knives and never get to the White House in the next generation, possibly two. As I have said on the floor before, if there is no serious immigration reform action headed toward a floor vote in the House by July 4th, we will not see action at all. It will be left up to the president to rescue the country from the worst aspects of our dysfunctional immigration system. On the Democratic side, we all prefer a legislative solution where the House, like our counterparts in the Senate, pass bills signed by the president. But in the absence of anything resembling leadership from the legislature, the president will not just sit back and watch a bad situation get worse. He will, in accordance with existing law, protect all immigrants he can. I believe he can protect literally millions of them through executive action. Immigration reform is not dead. It will just move to the White House for action if none comes from this House. So with 10 days left before July 4th, where do we stand? The majority leader released his legislative schedule for the month of June. Reforming our immigration system is nowhere to be found. Immigration is the single most important issue to address for the Republican Party's ability to be competitive at the national level after this fall and is nowhere on the schedule before this fall. So what lessons have we learned? Half measures to legalize, legalize some immigrants here and allow legal immigration for some industries there doesn't seem to have much political traction with conservative voters in the South. Blocking sensible immigration reform and sending out mailers decrying, quote, amnesty at the last minute doesn't seem to have much traction with Southern voters in conservative districts. Articulating, however, a firm argument for why deporting 11 or 12 million people is not a realistic proposition, defending your position that legal immigration is preferable to illegal immigration, and making clear that the only way to actual border security is a combination of enforcement, legal immigration, and addressing the legal status for immigrants already living and working here, that seems to work pretty well with Southern conservative voters. That is what the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Graham, would tell us, or the general lady from North Carolina, or every poll that has been taken in recent memory. And we know that in every part of the country, outside the most conservative districts, mainly in the South, supporting the end of the illegal immigration and a broad and rigorous legalization combined with serious workplace and border enforcement is not only the policy that works, it's the only policy that's viable politically. So every pundit on TV last night said it was time to man the barricades. They said immigration reform with a Republican stamp and a Republican Congress is dead because the American people want to be protected from the th threatening world outside, and Republicans, congressmen, want to be protected from their threatening voters. But it's still up to the Republican leadership how they plan to proceed. Not a single Republican who opposes immigration reform needs to vote for it. Not one. And we will still have a majority of the House voting to do what a majority of Americans want them to do. That is, address our broken immigration system. Next week in Judiciary, we will have a hearing on the crisis of unaccompanied minors fleeing Central America. And we will be pointing fingers at everyone but ourselves. And not, I would note, using the few remaining legislative days available to craft a sensible border and immigration strategy, as our colleagues did in the Senate almost a full year ago. Let us not accept the latest excuse for inaction on immigration, especially from those who want to take no action under any, under any conditions. This nation, built by and sustained by 400 years of immigration, needs a coherent system, and we need politicians brave enough to craft one.